Welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of Islam. We have a couple of announcements. Number one, there is a session meeting after church today. Next week, we will have uh, our annual meeting. It will be the 90th annual meeting of the First Presbyterian Church of Islam. And the last annual meeting of the First Presbyterian Church of Islam, because hopefully by Easter, we will be a merged church and we will have a new name as yet to be announced. Uh, we do have, we did have a joint session meeting this past week with the session of the Presbyterian Church of Oak Tree. And it was decided to have a Shore Tuesday pancake supper on Shore Tuesday, which is the day before Ash Wednesday. That's February the 21st. So keep that on your calendars. Do we have any other? Announcements? I was going to save this for the session, but I thought everyone should get to hear this. I got an email from Mom Something Mom, the organization that we uh, did our uh, baby shower for Mary for. And they wanted to let us know that our drive brought in 1,296 diapers, 3,528 wipes, and an additional 90 items as well as uh, some monetary gifts. So they wanted to thank us, and I want to thank everyone uh, for making that so successful. I'm sure those families will find those items essential in the coming months. So that's all I have, but I want to thank you guys and let you know how well, uh, how well we did. All right, well, let's turn our hearts and minds to the Lord as we prepare for worship.
You may be seated. Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks will be opened. Friends in Christ, God knows our needs before we ask. And in our asking, he prepares us to receive the gift of grace. Let us open our lives to God's healing presence, seeking peace with God and reconciliation with our neighbors. Let us confess to God whatever has wounded us or brought injury to others, that we may receive mercy and become a holy temple of the sinners of God. Let us confess our sin together. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us men what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Merciful God, hear now our own personal confessions that we lift up to you in silence. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ has died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Do you guys remember the story of the three little pigs? Yes. Right? Yeah? 
So, remember there's a big bad wolf that's going to go hunt down these three little pigs, and they all go to their house. I'm not going to make you guys do the flies and the house, don't worry. But the story begins with a mother pig sending her three little ones out into the world. The first one builds a house of straw. The second, a house of sticks. And the third, a house of bricks. Now this big bad wolf went to the first little pig's house and said, little pig, little pig, let me in. What's the little pig say? Not by the hair of my chinny, chin, chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And of course, the first little piggy's house did not stand a chance because it was made so weakly. Second pig, wolf heads over. The story doesn't really tell us what happens to the little pig, but I think it runs off, right? Because they all get together with the third little piggy. But the wolf heads to the second little pig's house and says, little pig, little pig, let me in. Not Not by the hair. Chinny, chin, chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And the second little pig's house was made of sticks and collapsed just as easily as the first. So they run off to the third pig's house. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair on my chinny, chin, chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. But no matter how hard he tried, the wolf could not blow the house down because it was made of brick. I actually forgot this part. The wolf, what's, what happens when the wolf can't blow the house in? Everyone remember? Right, I totally forgot about that part. It gets kind of dark because the three little pigs have a pot of boiling water under the chimney. And the wolf cries, yeah, and you know, it's, you know it runs away. So then we ask, who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Big bad wolf, big bad wolf. Who's afraid of the big bad bad wolf? Tra la 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 la. It's a wonderful little story. There's a lot of stories about the big bad wolf, right? There's this story, of course, Little Red Riding Hood, Peter and the Wolf, the boy who cried wolf. There seems to be no end of these stories. Even the Bible has a story about a big bad wolf. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. A higher hand will run away when he sees a wolf because the sheep don't belong to the higher hand and the higher hand doesn't really care about those sheep. When the higher hand runs away, the wolf will attack and scatter all the sheep. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as God knows me and I know God, I will lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd. We're sheep. Jesus knows us and we know him. So when we trust in Jesus, we can say, who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Let's pray. God, we thank you for sending your son to be our good shepherd. He gave his life for us. Help us to follow him and trust him to protect us from any evil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Saved. For the herd of 
my poor people I am hurt, I mourn, and this thing has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water, and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. And the psalm reading, we will read responsibly. Psalm 6 through 4 and 6 to 9. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. And my soul also is struck with terror. By you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, save my life. Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. I am weary with my mourning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of my foes. Be quiet from me, all who work the evil. The Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Final reading this morning, we turn to John 10, verses 11 to 18. Together, let's listen for the word of the Lord. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I laid down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's a special day. Following our next hymn, we will observe a service of wholeness and healing. Now, this service is intended to give us as a congregation and as individuals a chance to pray for our own needs by calling on God's saving grace, as well as a chance to give thanks for the healing we've already received through it. Now, it gives us a chance to confront our pain and suffering those places in our lives which we may try to avoid, those dark places that we do our best to completely ignore. But not today. Today we remember God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy. Today we change how we deal with pain, and we remember what God hopes for us, what God hopes we will bring to the world. Three scriptures we heard today will serve as a guiding principle in how we should grieve, how we should handle suffering and pain, and will remind us of the safety we find in Christ our Lord. Now, I think it's fair to say that we don't always handle grief and pain in the healthiest ways. I remember growing up, a common phrase in our house was, Suck it up. It wasn't said in a nasty way or anything like that, but it still challenged us to get over the issues and move on with life. We just needed to suck it up. For some, if not most of us, 
When it's physical pain, we often do our best to ignore it for a while. And we'll tell others that they should go see the doctor, but when it comes to our own minds, and I don't know about you, but it can take a lot to get me to go to the doctor. Not because I don't think it's something serious, but you know, suck it up. Tanya once had a threat to call my mom if I didn't go to the doctor immediately. And it's often much worse when it comes to psychological pain and suffering. We can all see someone has a broken arm because the arm is in a cast. And no one's going to say, get over it to a broken arm. Right? It's broken. Psychological pain? I think as a society, we are not nearly as understanding or accommodating. Whether it's something short-term or something a person has battled their entire lives, others often struggle to see it. Instead, it gets minimized too quickly, too easily. So, rather, we learn to internalize it. We keep it buried deep in our hearts and minds. In cases of long-term struggles, we do so to avoid those move on. When it's an acute pain, something traumatic that happens in our lives, we internalize it for other reasons. Perhaps we don't want to make others uncomfortable. Feel like wounded. God forbid someone's uneasy with our pain, with our tears, with us at our most vulnerable. I'm sure, we'll share with our family and close friends, but the larger community, not likely. Instead, we tell others, and even ourselves, we're doing well. We work to keep busy instead of thinking about our grief all day long. And you know, staying active is good, but not if it costs us the ability to grieve. Well, whether we're suffering from a physical problem, a chronic mental health issue, or an acute traumatic event, we need to grieve. We need to go through that pain and suffering, regardless of how it makes other people feel. Sometimes the only rational response is to come here to church and yell at God, to fight with God, to call on God and say, where are you? How long must I wait? You say you love us. Where's the love? You call this love? Yet are any of us really comfortable doing this? I do not. Because we've been taught from a young age that we cannot question God, that God never gives us more than we can handle, that God always has a plan for us. Friends, no. Simply no. I promise that that is right because the scriptures we read today we start with Jeremiah and his famous words, is there no balm in Gilead? You see, destruction is coming to Israel. God knows it, Jeremiah knows it, but the people have not listened. See, there's this one common shorthand idea, I'm sure you've heard of it, that the Bible has two gods, right? An Old Testament God and a New Testament God. The Old Testament God is mean and destructive, constantly judging the people and raining down fire upon them. And the New Testament God is the one full of love and grace and mercy and forgiveness. But look at Jeremiah again. Does this seem like a God bent on destruction? Well, these are the words Jeremiah is saying. That the prophet is warning the people these words, in reality, are God's. See, this passage is only a portion of Jeremiah's warning. And just a few verses later we hear, For they proceed from evil to evil, and they do not know me, says the Lord. Jeremiah is only sharing with us what God is saying. So listen again to Jeremiah's words. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Sure, Jeremiah is upset. Let's make this a little more clear. God's 
joy is gone. Grief is upon the Lord. God's heart is sick. God is in pain for the people. God is hurting for the people because God loves all the people, all of creation. Through humanity's own free will, God has been pushed aside. Even as the people cry out, is there no God in Zion? God weeps for them. God has never left us. The people have left the Lord. And when we hear Jeremiah explain, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Those are God's words. So remember, when you are in pain, when you are grieving, when you are suffering, remember that you are never alone. God is always there alongside you, always crying. What are we supposed to do? I'm sure many of us will not feel coming comfortable coming here yelling at God or crying out to God, where are you? And yet that is exactly what we must do, what we're supposed to do even. And we know this because of the book of Psalms. The Psalms are full of tears of lament full of the people crying out to God. Just listen again to this song. Oh Lord, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. My soul is also struck with terror, while you, oh Lord, how long? Bring it all to God. Don't hold back your tears when you're in pain. I'm weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes are wasting away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Did you hear that? I flood my bed with tears. These are not the words of someone scared to take it all to God. These are not the words of someone ashamed of their emotions, worried about making others uncomfortable. These are the words of someone with a complete relationship with God, the very relationship God wants to have with all of us. Now, of course, while it's healthy to release these emotions, we can't just sit on them, right? Don't forget, God is always with us, always with you. The Lord has heard my supplications. The Lord accepts my prayer. So take all your emotions, all your grief, all your hurt and pain, take all of it to God and know that in faith, God hears everything. And God is always, always with you. And the reason that we can do all of this, that we need never fear yelling at God, that we never have to worry about our faith when we experience anger and doubt toward God, the reason we can do all of this is because, yes, there is a balm in Gilead. There is a physician there waiting to heal all of us. And that physician, that balm in Gilead, is the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. The one who lays down his life for each of us. The entire reason that we're here today is the cross. I think what's amazing about this passage in John is when Jesus says, I know my own in my own know me, just as God knows me and I know God. Take a moment. Think how powerful that statement is. Our God, the God of the entire cosmos, who created everything in this universe, knows us, knows you, 
knows UK. Jim knows you. Heather, Bob, Ron, Andrea, God knows each of you. Not only that, but loves you so much that Jesus Christ laid down his life for you. Soon, God laid down his life for you. Betsy laid down his life for you. Joan, Jerry, everyone here, Jesus Christ laid down his life for you in order that we all may know him, that we may know God. Friends, there is absolutely a balm in Gilead. That physician is Jesus Christ, and he came to heal. Though he now sits with God, he still seeks to heal us. So turn to the Lord. Take it all to God, because God is crying for us to do that. God sent that balm into the world. The good shepherd calls each of us home. And we do know him. No matter how distant we may feel, no matter how much pain may fill our lives, we are not alone. God is with us. Always. Now today, our service of wholeness and healing is intended to help us cry out to God as a church and to take time individually to pray, to be anointed, and to remember that God hears everything we say, everything we plead, and everything we beg. God is with us all, always and forever. So when we flood our bed with tears, God cries with us. When we feel our bones shaking in terror, God shakes with us. When our souls are struck and we are pleading, oh Lord, how long? God is desperately trying to help us hear. God is right with us. When we feel all our joy evaporating, Jeremiah tells us God loses all joy as well. Now, of course, this does not mean you will always get everything we want, but we are never alone. God is with us. God gave the world the true balm in Gilead. Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, who laid down his life for all of us so that we may all be forgiven and one day experience eternal life through him, in him, and with him. The service is the time for us to relook at how we handle grief pain, sorrow, and doubt. Instead of continuing to hold them in, instead of saying, suck it up, take it all to God. Whether it's a physical ailment, a sudden trauma, or a chronic mental illness, take it all to God. No matter what we may be thinking, chances are we can find it in the prophets like Jeremiah. Find it in the Psalms. So don't be scared or nervous to share everything you are feeling with the Lord. Don't be scared to share your tears with the Lord. See, Scripture is full of examples that God is able to not only handle our pain, but begs us to bring it to the Lord. Jesus has already laid down his life for us. We are already forgiven. We are already living in God's grace. So do not be afraid to yell out to God, to yell out at God, because God is listening. God is there. So in just a few minutes, you will all have a chance to come forward for a private prayer. If anything is on your mind, please come forward. If anything is causing you pain or grief, no matter how old it may be, Please, come forward. Come forward and acknowledge that God is present in this place, in this moment. The Spirit surrounds us all and surrounds each of us individually, wrapping all of us in the loving arms of Christ. And remember, when you leave here today, 
you ever find yourselves asking, is there no wrong video? Never forget that. Absolutely there is. There is a balm in Gilead. It is the good shepherd who laid down his life for all of us. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Oh Lord, how long? How long until we hear your word guiding us to hear? Let us cry out to you that we can know your presence Though we realize your desire to have a complete relationship with us and that you are never far away, we can still be uncomfortable sharing it all. Let that change today. Let us bring it all to you that we can more fully know your love and share that love with others. Amen. Friends, please rise if you're able for hymn number 792. There is a balm until you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We did get a few prayer requests um, before the service uh, from Betsy. We're continuing to pray for Sarah. And she brought in flowers. Uh, they are placed in honor of those who are recovering from addiction. Uh, from Cookie, we're praying for Michael, for your friend Sharon, and uh, for all those who have aches and pains. Nancy, we're praying for CJ. And from Heather, we're praying for Heather for some relief from her pain. And from Lanisha, uh, who's, uh, who's being hospitalized. 
Are there any other joys or concerns? Yeah. Um, great joy, my great niece was born Friday the 13th, a team of leaves, seven pounds. She's beautiful. She's coming home today. And Tracy yes. Harry, who's been feeling a little under the weather. Sure. Carol Fox and Brian, who's been undiagnosed so far. Friends, I appeal to you, therefore, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Let's pray. God, our Creator, your will for us and for all your people is wholeness and salvation. Have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, Son of God, you came that we might have life and have it in abundance. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Holy Spirit, dwelling within us, you make us temples of your presence. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. To the triune God, the source of all love and all life, let us offer our prayers. For all who are in need of healing, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are disabled by injury or illness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are troubled by confusion or burdened by pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those, for all whose increasing years bring weariness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all about to undergo surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who cannot sleep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who practice the healing arts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For all we name now, both in our hearts and aloud, we pray for Sarah, for those who are in recovery from addiction, and those struggling to be recovered, to be in recovery. We pray for Michael, we pray for Sharon, we pray for all those who have aches and pains, we pray for CJ, we pray for Heather, Alicia. We pray for Gary. We pray for Carol. Lord, we also celebrate the birth of Athena Lee and act our successful eye surgeries. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Gracious God, source of all healing, in Jesus Christ, you heal the sick and mend the broken. We bless you for this oil pressed from the fruits of earth, given to us as a sign of healing and forgiveness, and of the fullness of life you give. By your Spirit, come upon all who receive this ministry of compassion, that they may know your healing touch and be made whole. To the glory of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, at this time, I invite those who would like to come forward one at a time.
for a time of private prayer, let me know if you would like anointing uh, on your forehead, your hand, or not at all.
Mighty God, you rise with healing in your wings to scatter all enemies that assault us. As we wait in hope for the coming of that day when crying and pain shall be no more, help us by your Holy Spirit to receive your power into our lives and to trust in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, now with grateful hearts, let us bring our tithes and our offerings to the God who makes us. in the heart of your faithful people the gift of generosity and the desire to do your will. Use these gifts to proclaim good news to every nation and restore all people in Christ. Amen. Our final hymn is number 408. There's a sweet, sweet spirit.
word and give you peace. Amen. Friends, as God's own, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, and patience. Forgiving one another as the Lord has forgiven you. And crown all these things with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Thanks be to God. Thank you.